Nothing to see here, just a white gay boy in Corona Queens trying to convince Hispanic people to walk away from the Democratic Party. No big deal. Hey everybody, it's Brandon Strzok from the Walk Away Campaign. I'm coming to you right now from District 14 of New York City. This is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's district, and I have something really exciting to announce. The Walk Away Campaign is going to be presenting our very first Walk Away Hispanic Americans Town Hall on November 9th, next month, right here in District 14 of New York City. We're so excited about this, and why are we doing it? Well, let me tell you a few things. 32 million Hispanic Americans are registered and ready to vote in the 2020 election. Now this is up 20 percent from 2016. There are 20 percent more Hispanic Americans ready to vote in 2020 and this group is the largest minority voting demographic in America. Also this group is being largely marketed to and targeted by the Democrat Party and I don't hear a lot of communication going on from any other party but the Democrats speaking to this demographic. So, Walk Away is here to take over. We're coming in to District 14 to kick off our very first of what will be many Walk Away Hispanic Americans Town Hall. And I wanted to come directly into this district and talk to the constituents of Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and ask them a few questions. Why are so many Hispanic people voting Democrat? Let's see what the people here have to say. Are you a voter? I am. Are you a supporter of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? Not really. Why not? I am uh, independent. I choose uh, when voting comes, uh, what is uh, right for uh, community, uh, I think is good, then I'll vote for either Republican or Democratic. You would be willing to vote for either one? Either one. That's I, great. I'm independent. Do you think Republicans are racist? Not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think some Democrats are racist? Of course there are. Okay. Do you think, what do you think about Donald Trump? Uh, my perspective, he's racist in some time, some time he's good. You don't think he's just bad? No, no not I don't, I don't think he's a very bad guy. You he's bad? He's just, he's a, you take it as a situation comes. Yeah. You, you know, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez killed a deal that would have brought Amazon here to this neighborhood, which ended up killing like 107,000 jobs, ultimately, and new schools, new opportunities. And yet people love AOC and they think that she's like this great savior, I think, for this community. Do you th what do you think about that? I think uh, Amazon deal was a bad uh, decision. Uh, it was a bad decision that it got killed. killed. Yeah, that's what I think. That's I, agree. My, I agree. I agree. Will you come to our event on November 9th right here in District 14? We're free food. I know, but I, I'm not around here. I don't live around here. I live in Astoria. If I get time, I would. Well, have you ever heard of the subway? I drive, actually. <laughs> well, then, I don't think you have an excuse for not coming. Sure, I do. Thanks for talking Thank to us. Over. Have a great day. Hi, would you be willing to tell me what you think of Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know about this, but... You don't? <laughs> do you live in the neighborhood? Yes. Would you be willing to come to our event? This is the, I'm with the Walk Away campaign, where people have walked away from the Democrat Party. Hispanic Americans are voting Democrat at a rate of 69%, but I think they're getting scammed by the Democrat Party. So we're throwing the first Walk Away Hispanic Americans Town Hall on November 9th, right here in District 14, and free food. We're going to feed you too. Will you come and bring your friends? Yes, Will you? of course. Go to walkawaycampaign.com slash events to get your free tickets. Free. And bring your friends. Free food. Have a great day. All right, bye-bye. Hi, Eddie. Are you a, do you vote? Are you a voter? Nah. Are you registered to vote? Yeah. Why don't you vote? Do you feel like your vote matters? Uh, no, no. Why not? Why not? Because the system. That's, it's but it's up to planned. us to change the system. No, yeah. it's not already planned. You think so? No, we have a president in office right now who's changing the plan. He's shaking it all up. He's making things different. And, you know, people like you and me, we have to stand up. We have to use our voices. Do you live here in District 14? Yeah. Man, you've got to come to our event. Please, you're going to love it. So we're doing the Walk Away Hispanic Americans Town Hall on November 9th right here in District 14. It's free. We'll feed you some food. And you're going to love it. We're going to talk about all the reasons why minorities in this country, whether it be because of the color of your skin or your sexual orientation, your gender, need to walk away from the Democratic Party. I want you to start voting. Okay. You promise you will in 2020? Yes.
Who are you going to vote for for president? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You know what? After you come to our town hall, maybe you'll have a better idea of who you should vote for. Will you come? Yeah, for sure. Walkawaycampaign.com slash events. Free tickets. Just go sign up. And we love to see you there. Saturday, November 9th. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Have a great day. Hey there, can I ask you what you think of Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez? What do you think of Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? Do you have any thoughts? No. No? How, can I ask how old you are? Twelve. You're only twelve years old. Now, is this your mom? Yeah. Is your mom registered to vote? Yeah. I yes? Is your mom going to vote in 2020? Uh, no. <laughs> mom? Yes or no? Will you vote in 2020? Vas a votar? Que si vas a votar? Que si vas a votar? Resident. Uh, ineligible to vote. Ah, in two years. Can you talk to us? Just for, please. So in two years, you'll be, regist you'll be uh, legal to vote. Yeah? That's, uh, are you excited? Yeah. So, will you? Are you not a legal citizen now? Um, no. Um, no. But you will be in two years. Are you so excited? Yes. 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 We're so excited to have you here in America. That's exciting. Will you come to this event? We want to talk to the Hispanic community. It's a free event. We're trying to encourage Hispanic uh, people to rethink why they're voting Democrat. Yes. And we're going to provide you lunch, free food. Tell your mom to come. Walkawaycampaign.com slash events free tickets yes okay thank you yeah. and congratulations okay, thank congratulations you. have a great day what's your name cielos cielos i'm brandon strock i started something called the walk away campaign i'm encouraging americans to walk away from the democratic party especially if they are a member of a minority group now i'm assuming you are not caucasian uh -huh. uh, I'm mexican. you're mexican yeah I'm mexican are you registered to, how old are you 16. Oh, so you're going to be voting in a couple of years. Yeah. Will you vote? Yeah. What What party are you? do you feel like you'll vote for? Mm, the one that has, like, you know, justifiable reasons to be, govern, you know, governor. Do you, so you would be willing to vote for any party if you felt like they had a good candidate? Well, yeah, as long as it's, it, it, it helps us um, progress and do a better for our society, then I don't see why not. Yeah, but you know, right now the media keeps telling Hispanic people. I mean, honestly, the media is just um, a lot of. There's a lot of lies in the media. I'll be honest with that. So you think you gotta keep that in mind. So if you're gonna like vote, you gotta like be considerate about what you're doing because it's just not. It's just not a game because it's also like our lives, our our society, what we gonna do with this, how we gonna move with it, like our development of civilization. How are we gonna end up being? What are we gonna do with our like with our daily lives? That's exactly right. Exactly. That's so, exactly what it is. And if people are failing to like, you know, understand it and you know, see that and try to change it, then you know, you should become aware and awake that there is something, you know, that you're missing. So you're 16 years old, but you already know that the media is not telling you the truth a good amount of the time. Obviously. Why do you know that? And so many grown people don't know that. They do know that, but they're just being ignorant or arrogant, and they don't want to accept the fact, like. Think about it. It's like it's like me saying like you've been believing all this all this life for like a couple of years for then all of a sudden to like you know somebody be like yo that, it's a lie they pull the plug out of you are you obviously gonna be like wait 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 what you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to be like oh am I right or am I wrong or my beliefs wrong you're not you're gonna be doubting yourself and when you're doubting yourself you're able to be controlled or manipulated and I guess you know that's when we start falling because you know we we start questioning we start doubting panicking. And, you know, that's how our civilization will, like, you know, cease to end. You're such a smart guy. I mean, you really are. Are you, do you have an opinion about Donald Trump? Honestly, um, that his, he's not being considered. He's just being, like, he's just thinking about people that got money. Uh -huh. Would you, I know you're not going to be old enough, but would you consider voting for Donald Trump? I'm going to be honest, no. You wouldn't even consider it? No. Would you consider coming to our event right here in your own neighborhood? It's the Walkaway Hispanic Americans Town Hall. This amazing panel of people are going to be talking. It's a free event Saturday, November 9th, right here in District 14. It's free. We're going to provide you 
food. We're going to cater it so you get free food. And um, we're going to be talking about why the Hispanic community should walk away from the Democrat Party. You're a really smart guy, and I would really, really love to have you there. Will you come? It's free and it's like early on Saturday. I would go just to like see what like you know what like what other people have in mind. Maybe I'll find somebody who has the same mindset as me. And, and you get to argue back. If you don't like what you hear, you can stand up and say, "I think I don't think that's right." So I'll, yeah, I'll see. Well, I'd like to invite you to our walkaway Hispanic Americans town hall. Doesn't matter if you're Hispanic or not. It's actually for all people. But we're encouraging minority groups black, brown, LGBT, to walk away from the Democrat Party, stop voting Democrat at such an enormous rate because I think we're being used and manipulated by the Democrat Party. And I'd love to invite you to our event right here in District 14. We don't tell people where to go and what to think. We just encourage people to think for themselves. Do you consider yourself a Democrat? Not at all, no. Really? Why not? I mean, I'm not really with the party oh, because not. both parties are basically the same thing to me. So Are they? Yeah. Yeah. It's not just because like, cause a lot of people think because you're, like for example, a minority group, you're automatically a Democrat, yes. but I feel like both groups are the same thing, so okay. it doesn't matter. I definitely wouldn't be a Republican, clearly, but like, both... No, why do you say clearly? Because it's the same thing. It's just worse. Republicans are like, they only think for themselves, in my opinion, so that's why I'm like, even with Democrats... But yeah, I think, see, I used to be a Democrat and I'm a gay man and that's, I'm another group that's like, you're, I'm gay, so I'm supposed to be a Democrat, but I walked away from the Democratic Party. I'm now a Republican. I'm now a Trump supporter, which I never thought that I would be in my life. Oh, I love him. Yeah, I think he's great. And, but the thing is that what the media is telling us is not true. He doesn't hate black people. He doesn't hate gay people and neither do Republicans. Yes, that's not the case. It's just a lot of things that he does say and do. I feel like it's just not really professional and it's not really getting results, if that makes sense. See, do, now, would you be willing to come to our event? It's free. And you and it's. And the thing is, it's it's a town hall, so you 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 can stand up, you can argue back, you can say what you're saying is crap. This is our panel. I'm so excited. This is um our Hispanic panel. These people have either walked away or they're on more the conservative side, and they just want to have a conversation with people in this community who are at a rate of like 69 percent voting Democrat and say, hey, I think there's another choice. Okay, I, I get it. You're a really smart girl, and I I hope that we see you there. Thank you. Thanks so much for talking. Have a great day. Excuse me, sir. Hispanic people are getting scammed by the Democrat Party and by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Would you like to talk for a minute? Can I talk to you for a minute? Huh? Can we talk for a minute? About what? What is your name? Daniel. Daniel? Yeah. Brandon, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. How are you? I'm good, good. Um, do you live here, like in this area? Yeah. Okay. I live in the next block. Are you registered to vote? No, nah, not yet. I mean, well, yeah. Uh, How old are you? 20. Okay, so you could vote. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, do you vote? No. If yeah, you- I just turned 20. Well, you can vote when you're 18, Daniel. But like two years ago, I was, it was an election day. That's true. But the midterms were last year. But that's okay. I'm not going to give you a hard time about that anymore. What I want to let you know is that the Hispanic community is getting scammed by the Democrat Party. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of people love Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is the congresswoman for this district. 69% of Hispanics are voting Democrat. Do you, are you a Hispanic guy? Yeah. Yeah? So... I'm with the walkaway campaign. I started this thing, this movement called the walkaway campaign, encouraging people to walk away from the Democrat party, especially if you're a minority in this country, if you're black, brown, LGBT, most of us are voting Democrat. And so we're doing an event right here on Saturday, November 9th at one o'clock here in district 14. We're offering you a catered meal too. We're going to break foot. Oh, see? Oh. Yeah. And we just want to have a conversation with this community. Why are people voting Democrat at a rate of 69%? And is there a better choice, Daniel? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I love, I love well, you'll know after you come to the event. All right, all right. So you're coming, right? Yeah, hey, it sounds free food. So yeah, <laughs> I love it. All right. So all you got to do is go to walkawaycampaign.com and register for free tickets. Right. Saturday, November 9th, this Saturday, and just go there today. As soon as you get home, free tickets. All right, bro. Yeah. Thanks for talking. I did a bad job with that fist bump. That was like. See you there, Daniel. Do you belong to a political party? I'm a Democrat. Do you like what the Democrats are doing right now? I mean, do you feel like going into 2020, the push towards socialism, the push towards open borders? 
Uh, well, that's a complete lie. I haven't heard anybody from the Democratic Party saying that they want open borders. That is absolutely a lie. It's misleading people, making them believe something that is no promoted by any of the political um, representatives of the Democratic Party. But at the Democratic debate, they actually said, they said they would not, they want to make it no longer illegal to cross. So that's an open border. No, necessarily. If it's not illegal to cross the border, that's that's a mis uh, that, that's a misquote. I haven't heard, and I, believe me, and my friend could tell you. I have the news in all the different channels, trying to listen to every opinion, and nobody in specific has said open borders. That's a lie, and that's absolutely lying. Well, I agree with you. I don't think that they've used the term open borders. Open borders does. I don't. I don't. I don't think that any of those political representatives has said open borders. They may they have said some leniency towards this or that, you know, in terms of how the immigration should come to the United States. But I don't think that anybody will kill themselves politically saying open borders. That would be an absolute uh, stupidity to say. Well, you said Democratic or Democrat. You sound you seem like you have a lot of opinions, which I like. And I like that you're really involved and you, you're you're thinking about the issues and how you feel about stuff. Would you consider coming to our event? It's a town hall. You can you can express your opinion. You can argue if you hear things you don't like. What it is is a panel of Hispanic Americans who have walked away from the Democrat Party and they want to tell their reasons why and why they feel like there's a better choice for Hispanic Americans. Will you come and just listen and then you can talk back? I'll, I'll, I'll give it a thought. Okay. It's on Saturday, November 9th, and it's free, and uh, and we're providing uh, catering. There'll be food, so you can come, get some food. That's so I hope I see you there. You know, the exchange of ideas is always good. Thank you. Thank go. You can go to walkawaycampaign.com, click on events, and get free tickets. But you have to register. Excuse me, sir. Oh, you look very bright. Can I ask you a question? Sure, yeah. Okay. We're, um, do you live here in this neighborhood? Not in this neighborhood, no. Kew Garden. Close by? Are you a member of the Hispanic community? No, no, I'm not. No. That's fine. That's okay. Yeah. So I'm here to do this event basically to ask people, why is this Hispanic community voting Democrat at a rate of 69% and is there perhaps a better choice? Now, do you have an opinion about uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez? Uh, I do. I don't support most of the things she does. Uh, I've done research about her Green New Deal that she proposed. I think it's completely irrational. Um, I believe there's better ways to handle the problem that we have with global warming and all that. I think that some of the approaches she's taken are more radical, don't really make sense. But um, yeah, I don't support her overall. That's great. I, well, that's very interesting. I mean, I'm being objective. Um, <laughs> let me ask you, uh, she's a democratic socialist. Yeah. Do you have an opinion about socialism? Uh, even though I come originally from a socialist country, I'm from Serbia originally, uh, I think socialism in practice doesn't really work. I mean, it the, uh, the theory itself is, you know, is a moral theory where we want everyone to be, you know, equitably equal, where everyone has, you know, benefits such as, you know, health care and everything and everything. Yeah, and all that, exactly. But, you know, in practice, the system doesn't really work. But yet, I think the majority of people in this area think that she's like the future of politics. I mean, I don't want to say there's a lot of uh, propaganda. But in New York City, I notice there's a lot of propaganda against <laughs> Trump and all that. And when you look at the story a bit deeper, I think it's a bit, you know, it's not as, as black as they portray it, you know. Do you have an opinion about Trump? Uh, I do. I think he's not a very political person. I think he is a very intelligent when it comes to finance and business. But when it comes to being, you know, politically, uh, politically outspoken, he's not really the best. Still, I do support a lot of his, of, uh, his policies and all that. Did you vote in 2016? Uh, I didn't, because I was uh, 17 at the time, so I can I can actually make it. You're going to vote next year? I hope so, yeah. Would you consider voting for Trump? I wouldn't. If if there are better candidates than him, sure, I will vote for them, but... But you're not outright against it? I'm not outright against him. I'm not really out all out for... I'm not really supporting him either. I understand. Sort of in the middle, but yeah. I, I think still better. But you're open. Vincent, yeah, definitely open, yeah. Awesome, cool. Would you consider attending our event, bringing some friends with you? Sure. So this is on Saturday, um, November 9th, right here in District 14. We'll be revealing the location uh, before the event. If you go to walkawaycampaign.com and click events, you can register for free tickets. We're also providing lunch for everybody, so it'll be cool. And it's an open forum town hall. You'll hear from our panelists, and then everyone gets a chance to get up and speak and argue and debate and have a discussion if you disagree. So we would love to see you there. Yeah, for sure. Good to meet you. Thanks for stopping to talk. Have a great day. You too, too. Excuse me, sir. You don't have to be a Democrat. Thank you.
You're welcome. Hey guys, how are you? You don't have to be a Democrat. Yay! You don't have to be a Democrat. Guys, it's your lucky day. You don't have to be a Democrat. Listen, guys, we have an incredibly crucial election coming up in 2020. I think probably the most important election in any of our lives. I don't care if you love Trump. I don't care if you don't love Trump. I don't care if you love the Republican Party or you don't. This is not the time for a protest vote. This is the time to save America, which means in 2020 it is crucial that you vote red. Black, white, straight, gay. It's time for all to walk away. Walkawaycampaign.com. Hey everybody, I'm Brandon Strzok, founder of the hashtag walkaway campaign. This is the movement for all Americans to walk away from the Democrat party. It is so important at this point that we really wake people up and get them to see that it's time to walk away. It is so necessary as we see this country becoming more and more divided, as we see more hatred and vitriol and, and even violence at times being perpetrated by the Democrat party and by liberals and that this is supported by the liberal media. As we see a party that I once used to be devoted to become a party that's embracing such extreme policies and becoming more socialist, more globalist, having less and less concern for the actual American people, for the people who live here, who work hard, who pay taxes and want to live in a country where they can prosper and, and come from nothing and make something out of themselves in a capitalist society who want to have safe, secure, protected borders in which they can raise their children in a safe environment and know who's in this country. But I think most importantly, it's the media that we need to push back against so hard. The media is absolutely the reason, the catalyst for me in walking away. The discovery that the media that I trusted so much was capable of such manipulation, such dishonesty, and such corruption when it came to creating false narratives and creating division in this country. The fact that we have a media that's completely unwilling to honestly report on the achievements of our president and his administration, and instead creates a narrative that he is a monster, a bigot, a racist, and that his followers are no better. This same media that makes it so impossible for black people, for brown people, for LGBT people to feel safe, to start thinking for themselves, to start waking up, to say, hey, I don't have to vote the same way that my parents did or my grandparents did or all of my friends are. They create such an atmosphere of pressure that makes people feel like they don't have the right or the ability to break free from groupthink, from the tribal mentality to say, hey, despite the fact that I'm gay, or black, or Hispanic, or a woman, or what have you. I'm an individual, I'm an American. I can think for myself, I can do whatever I want to do. They are hell bent on controlling the minds and the behavior and the emotions of minority classes in this country and their entire constituency. I think it's insidious, I think it's destructive, and frankly, I think it's evil. And that's why I started the Walk Away campaign because I want everyone in this country to know you are an individual, you are an American, you can think for yourself and you have a voice. And you know what? You're not alone. You can walk away from the Democratic Party and you'll be joining a lot of really great people when you do. Welcome to Nexus Extra. Today we are taking another look at whether Twitter should suspend Donald Trump's account. The presidential hopeful Kamala Harris thinks it should. She thinks he's gone too far with this whole whistleblower scandal. What do our guests think of all this? Let's go and find out. Up there in the top left, we have uh, Brandon Stracker. He used to be a Democrat and now he's a Republican and encourages others to walk away. He's gone so far the other way. In fact, he was even allowed to open one of President Trump's rallies. That's it's right over there. We have one of his mates, Joy Villa, a musician and vocal supporter of Donald Trump. Boom, boom. And finally, down at the bottom, he might be trying to get them back on to his side. We have a seasoned media advisor who has worked with the likes of Senators Ted Kennedy 
and Harry Reid. Thank you all very much for joining us on Nexus Extra. Brandon, I want to start with you. Introduce yourself to our viewers. You are the founder of the Walk Away Movement. What's that all about and how did you come to switch sides? Sure. So, uh, yes, I am a former liberal and a former Democrat my entire adult life. I voted, uh, pledged total allegiance to the Democrat Party. And I would say in a nutshell, the main reason why is because I bought into the liberal media narrative that is pushed constantly in America, which is that the Republican Party is the party only for heterosexual white people, that if you are a person of color, if you are a an LGBT person, if you have a minority status of any kind, you don't have a place uh, beyond being a Democrat. You don't have a place in the center or the political right in America. And for me, the shift came after the election of 2016, in which I voted for Hillary Clinton and was completely traumatized and devastated that Donald Trump had been elected president because the media that I, as a gay man, had trusted my entire life told me that we had just elected the second coming of Hitler uh, into office in America. Uh, and in uh, January of 2017, I was posting on social media content constantly trying to understand how it was that the American people could possibly vote for this man. And finally, somebody who had been a lifelong Republican reached out to me with a social with a media clip that showed very clearly uh, one of those key moments in the campaign where they had maligned Donald Trump had been spun out of context. A narrative had been completely created by the liberal media that was completely untrue. And it opened my eyes for the very first time to what the liberal media in America does to anybody that that they consider to be their political opponent. Uh, this sent me on a long journey of research throughout 2017 that resulted in me leaving the Democratic Party, becoming a Republican, and I'm now a proud Trump supporter. Brandon, let's look at that incident. So it was when Donald Trump appeared to mimic and mock a disabled reporter, and then Fox News uh, basically said, no, that's what he does when he feels he's caught someone in a lie. Let's have a listen to that. And we'll get some of these regulators out of the banks so you can borrow and you can help. Because, you know, the banks, the banks now, they can't do anything. They're, they're run by the regulators. In all fairness to the banks, they're run by the regulators. When you see the president of the bank, I mentioned the word regulator. Oh, these guys come in, they run the banks. And I watched a general recently on television. And they said to him, what do you think about ISIS? Oh, ISIS is very tough. And I'm saying, first of all, why is a general on television? I don't want my generals on television. Well, I heard Ted's a good debater. I said, he is a good debater, but he can't talk, okay? Bad talker. He's a good debater, bad talker. So he's over here. They asked him about waterboarding. They said, Senator Cruz, what do you think of waterboarding? Oh, uh, I don't want to talk about it. You know, he didn't, he didn't want to talk about waterboarding because too controversial. And I'm saying to myself, they're chopping off heads. He doesn't want to talk about waterboarding. A couple of good paragraphs. It's, and it's talking about northern New Jersey draws the prober's eye. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I thought, oh, maybe that's what I said. This is 14 years ago. He still, they didn't do a retraction. 14 years ago, they did no retraction. Brandon, so that was the turning point for you. What did you then go on to do with this walk away campaign? How did you get that started? Sure. Well, as I said, I mean, that was just the beginning. That sparked the seed of me doing a lot of research and understanding that the media does this all the time. And they're complicit with the Democrat Party who supports this. It's a circle of dishonesty and uh, and manipulation of, of the American people and manipulation of truth. I didn't want to keep this information to myself when I discovered it. So I began speaking out about it. And I found that a lot of friends who were liberals, a lot of friends who are Democrats were turning their backs on me, stabbing me in the back, uh, maligning me on social media, etc. So I finally kind of said to hell with it in May of 2018. I created a six minute video in which I detailed everything that I found wrong and objectionable about liberalism and the Democrat Party. And I launched something called the Walk Away Campaign, encouraging other people to make their testimonials and tell their stories about why they too are walking and, away from the divisive left. And how big is your social media presence now as a result of that campaign? Well, the campaign itself has about over half a million patriots in the walkaway campaign, tens of thousands of whom have created video and written testimonials telling their stories about why they're walking away. Joy, you're a young black woman. You live in Los Angeles, not a typical Trump supporter, or at least that's what we're told. What's your story? 
Well, I uh, was a Democrat. I voted for, you know, uh, Obama. I thought being a liberal was the good side. I'm an artist. I grew up actually with a conservative dad, but I thought that's his beliefs. You know, he likes Fox, but I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to vote liberal. I'm going to vote for all the, the causes I hold dear. You know, I'm a vegan. I'm, I'm an artist. I'm black. I'm also Latina. So growing up in Hollywood as well, even though I held personal conservative values, like I was personally pro-life as I am today, and many of my peers were not, I kept quiet. I said, well, if I say something, I'm going to lose a job. I'm going to be, you know, losing blacklisted and losing things in Hollywood. So I became more and more closeted, less and less educated, and more and more just going along with things. Even though I was this big, beautiful artist creating all these different things, music, touring 25 countries, till finally Trump came on the scene. And I was about to vote for Bernie. I liked Bernie in the beginning because all my music friends like Bernie. Everybody wanted free college. I thought, well, I guess he sounds like the outsider. You know, I liked his agreements on trade. I liked that he was, in that, you know, sort of a people's person. And um, when Trump came into the scene, I was actually anti-Trump because I believed all the hype. I thought he was misogynistic. I thought he was racist. I was like, the, the, the apprentice guy, you know, I mean, I, I liked him in New York, but is he presidential material? I knew for sure I would never vote for Hillary. But I thought, Trump, I don't know. Until a girlfriend said, you need to watch some videos. You will like him. You're very like him, actually. And I started getting red-pilled. I started going into all the old videos on, you know, uh, on Oprah when he did the 1989 interview where she asked him, would you ever run for president? And he said, only if my country needed me. He talked about not being dependent upon foreign governments, foreign oil, China, you know, being more... Uh, nationalistic, having pride in the country. He talked about that way back in the 80s. I said, this is the guy and I'm going to vote for him and I'm just going to pray that he's going to be pro-America and do the things that we need to do. And I became hardcore red pill, voted for him, eventually had to come out because I was so closeted being a Trump supporter. I only told about three people. And I said, you know what? If Madonna can go up there and say, I'm going to blow up the White House in front of millions of people, which he did at the Women's March in January, well, and this newly elected president, they're still hating on him. I'm going to wear a Trump dress at the Grammys. You mentioned the just that. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, we noticed. Now, you, you mentioned the expression red pill twice there. We'll have to explain that later. But first of all, you voted for Barack Obama in the previous election. If Obama right. went up against uh, Donald Trump in 2020, if that were possible, what would you do? I would vote for Donald Trump again proudly. Because now that I'm educated, I see that Trump is actually caring about all Americans of all different colors and ethnicities. You know, he passed the first step back, which was monumental for black Amer Americans, especially. Obama never did anything like that. You know, Trump he put in a billion dollars toward the Urban Revitalization Act, helping black families be able to buy homes and live in homes and, and make neighborhoods better for black and brown people. I think it's Obama time we brought in Jim. Jim? Uh, you've been a Democrat for many, many years. You've worked with Senators Ted Kennedy and Harry Reid. This is your opportunity to talk to two of the flock who have gone away and bring them back in. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> oh, I'm not confident I'm good enough to pull that one off based on what I've heard right now. Look, we've, I've got a fundamental disagreement with just about everything I've heard from the other two folks. But it is what it is. I mean... If you go back uh, to the very beginning of our country, uh, politics was always very ugly, very div uh, divisive. But again, as I've said before, I, because of my leadership responsibilities with the two senators I work for, uh, I, I had a chance to deal with four uh, presidents, both Republican and Democrat. I've never seen anything like this guy. Um, he is fundamentally corrupt. Uh, he is... Blowing up the world order. Uh, yeah, Jim. I, yes. I was, oh, yes. We lost him. We lost Jim. Oh, that's a shame. Blow up. Well, the hey, world let's order. just keep going. This is Nexus Extra. Let's just keep going. You know what? Jim was making some points there that basically he's corrupt. Uh, he's racist. He's made some very nasty tweets. Let me put one to to you that that he would have he would have liked to have done had he been still with us. <laughs> uh, and that one is uh, essentially to the squad. You know, to, to Presley, to Ilhan Omer, to Rashida Tlaib, and to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Ocasio. His message there, his tweet was there. If you don't like America, why don't you go back to the crime-infested countries that you came from? You don't think that's, that's off for a president to say? 
Well, he actually said, if you don't like it, why don't you go back to the crime-infested countries you came from, fix it, then show us how you did it. But, but, but most of so them came from the right. United States, not except with the, with the exception of Ilhan Omer. And they were pretending and saying that this country was horrible, that this country is, is, is not good, that they need to destroy and dismantle America. I mean, these are people who are speaking treasonous things, in my opinion, to be elected officials. And you're putting down the very country that's making you great. Whether you were born here or you immigrated here, everybody here has a chance to make this country great and to put it down as an elected official will go someplace else make Joy? it better and then show us how much better it could be. you know what was interesting in the main program which people can watch online uh we explained that you were at the trump social media summit back in the summer and we explained that he had invited alternative sort of uh online stars if you like to talk about their their problems with the big tech companies and perhaps look at solutions now i want to talk about a specific incident which uh Caught my eye in particular. Uh, you were in the Rose Garden, I think. Is that right? That's right. And you were sitting there with all the alternative social media stars. And on the outside of the roped area, you had all the traditional reporters and journalists. And they probably didn't like that very much. And then there was this incident with Sebastian Gorka, who is uh, one of Trump's what, media advisors and a journalist. Let's have a listen to this. This is why all of us are here in the White House. This is why he took questions from us. Stay an extra hour. He didn't have to. Because we're citizen journalists and we respect you guys. But you gotta stop reporting fake news. It's an embarrassment. This is fake news. You guys should be embarrassed with this guy. Thank you. Back to Joy. Joy, you were really standing up for yourself. What on earth was going on there? Well, I was standing up for myself. I was standing up for all of America because we are sick of what the was fake the incident? news. We are sick of that. What happened was the press actually had to leave their seats because the president invited all of the social media stars to be able to sit in their chairs. And the press was very angry about that. We were special guests. You know, he invited us into the Rose Garden. He started, you know, giving his speech and then he left. And Brian Kareem, a Playboy reporter and sometimes CNN reporter, said, oh, why don't you take new, uh, questions? Why don't you take questions? What about questions from the media? I said, you know what? He took questions from us. Maybe if you weren't fake news, he would take questions from you as well. And that's when he started calling us demon-possessed. And Seb Gorka came over and said, excuse me, you call yourself a journalist? You're nothing but a punk. And he said, well, why don't we take this outside? And it just became the shouting match where Brian threatened Seb Gorka. And Gorka had responded because Brian had called me and the people around me demonized, simply because I said, just don't be fake news, do be think, a gentleman. Do you think someone who works with the president should be squaring up to a journalist and calling him a punk? Well, when he calls guests like myself a demon, you're demonized. You're hungry for demonic possession. That's all on video. I think he absolutely should. Everybody has a right to defend themselves and the people that are around them. Well, we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Unfortunately, we've still got the frozen screen of Jim Manley there. We're going to go to Brandon for a Maybe second. Maybe he should walk away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not fair. He's not here to defend himself. You will never turn Jim Manley. Brandon, I want to come to you for a moment. Uh, looking forward to the 2020 election, can you give us a few tips about how the strategy, the social media strategy is going to play out? I mean, well, for example, like, what are, you, what are you going to be doing from the sidelines to be supporting that campaign? Well, there's a number, you know, my primary objective is to try to get as many people to wake up and realize what the, the, the Democratic Party, the liberal media, and the ideology of liberalism, where they are taking us, how this is toxic and divisive and a complete detriment to the to the future of America. And I'm going to try to get as many people as I can to walk away. I want to quickly comment on something Jim did manage to get out before he froze. There were two key phrases that he said that I think really need to be paid attention to here. The first one is he said of Donald Trump we've never seen anything like this guy before absolutely we haven't America thank God elected this president the next thing that he said is he is blowing up the world order 
Truer words have never been said, and he really let the mask drop there when he said that. This is a president who puts America first, who cares about the sovereignty of an American nation and the American people. He is absolutely blowing up the world order that the globalist presidents before who did not care about the American people were putting into structure. And now this he's the subject of an impeachment inquiry, Brandon. Well, why do you suppose that is? Why do you suppose that is? Because the, 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 the politics as usual, the usual politicians that have been in the office are terrified of this guy for that very reason. He is blowing up the world order, he is shaking up the system, and he is putting the American people first. And these politicians don't care about the American people. They care about globalist principles, and they care about power, and they care about control. This is a president who puts the American people first. Well, let's just we see. Are- Let's just see if in 20, yeah, yeah. Let's just see if in 2020, the American people put him first. Brandon Strzok, Joy Villa. Thank you so much, Jim Manley. Thank you. Really appreciate you still being there, kind of. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. And thank you uh, for watching Nexus Extra. Really appreciate it. If you want to watch this or any of our other episodes, it's all on YouTube. Thank you. Bye-bye.